You're listening to the Co-Creator Network. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Good afternoon. Welcome to Why Shamanism Now, a practical path to authenticity with your host, Christina Pratt. Director of the Last Mask Center for Shamanic Healing. She's talking about how shamanic skills can bring us to physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being, especially when nothing else can. Now, here's your host, Christina Pratt. And welcome, everyone, to Why Shamanism Now. This is your host, Christina Pratt. And I'd like to call out to the helping spirits to be with us here today. So I call out first to your ancestral helping spirits. I call out to my own ancestral helping spirits. I ask these people who lived well and died well, those who bring all that is good and true and beautiful in our ancestral lines to us. I ask them to be with us here today that we can draw on that rich legacy, that we as the living can lean in and learn from those who have gone before us, that we can draw on their blessings, draw on their wisdom, Wisdom, so that we can go forward in a way that has a great confidence in those traditions that need to be held true and that we have in that confidence the inspiration to innovate and to create change where those traditions no longer take us where we need to go and no longer allow us to do what it is that we need to do in our own time. So I call out to these ancestral helping spirits to help us, the living, do what must be done for those who are coming. And let us reach through these humans back in time, out past humanity into those ancestral helping spirits that are much older than humans, that have been here much longer and will be here long after. We call out to all of the other forms of life here on earth. And we call out to you to help us to understand our true nature, help us to sink in and spend less time distracted in things that have no real bearing in life, and to tend to those things that have bearing on the cultivation of our soul. And in this way come into right relationship with all living things and to step into that role that we are in that great web of life, that role of bringing blessings, singing the songs that praise the beauty and coming into this place that allows life to innovate forth in a way that allows all that is good and true and beautiful to be present for those who are coming. So let us take our place here with all life and invite those non-human helping spirits to help us understand ways to do that. And as these helping spirits come in and gather around us here today, let us gather ourselves from wherever we might be, multitasking through our contemporary lives and draw ourselves down into our heads. Let us take another nice deep breath and settle down into our hearts. And let us move from our hearts into our belly. And from our belly, let us reach down literally or in our imagination to the earth itself and to give gratitude to the earth for this day. Gratitude for life, gratitude for the wonder of this dreaming that we can change anything as long as we are still breathing. And with deep, profound gratitude to the earth, let's reach our energy down through all the layers of the earth sending out gratitude again and again as we go until we reach all the way down to the very center of the earth. And as we anchor ourselves firmly there in the center of the earth, let us reach in and be restored by our connection to things that draw their power through darkness. Darkness that allows us to rest at night, darkness that allows us to learn from our own dreams and to follow our own visions. We call out to this darkness for rest and rejuvenation and we draw up this energy into our day and into our bodies, into our lives to draw up the wisdom of manifestation, how to be here in form in a good way. And we call out to this energy that is that energy that is before all the great diversity of life here on earth. And we call out to that energy to be with us to be within us, to help us to understand who we are, to help us to understand where we stand and what we stand for, and to discover what within us has true heart and meaning. 
and let us build our sense of home, build our sense of belonging on what has true heart and meaning in our own lives. Let us not just take whatever we've been given from those who went before us, but to actually run that energy past our own internal truth to make sure that the traditions we've been handed are traditions that align with what has great truth and meaning in our heart. And for those things that do move us in our heart, let us let those things teach us how to be in right relationship with other people, right relationship with other aspects of our own self, right relationship with our environment, and right relationship with the invisible world. And as we come into right relationship with all things, let us find our place in that great oneness. And from that place of oneness, let us reach up from our belly to our heart, our heart to our mind, reaching up and out the top of the head into the sky, out through the atmosphere, out into the cosmos, all the way up to the highest power of the universe. And in this way, let us connect the earth energy to the sky open ourselves to this divine radiant light and begin to draw that energy down, allowing it into ourselves, allowing it into our day, allowing it into these proceedings. In this way, we call in the energy of protection and blessing. We call in the benevolence of this universe and let it fill our heart. We call in inspiration and illumination. Let it fill our mind Let us be inspired. Let us do what it is that we are called to do with our life in a way that inspires others to do the same. And let us live in a way that we become the lighthouse for others when they are lost in their own storms. And let us be willing to look with soulful eyes and to see when others are the lighthouse when we are lost. And in this way, let us learn to be here together in a good way. And so as we draw that divine radiant energy into ourselves and send it all the way down to the center of the earth, let the earth and sky connect these two great legendary lovers. Let that great love fill you. Let it awaken your heart. Let your heart awaken that crucible of transformation that is within it. And in that crucible, choose to draw up the passions that run deep in your belly and choose to draw down your capacity for clarity and understanding and let these energies mix and merge there into your heart as you draw out of that the third and most sacred thing some sense some inkling some awareness of why it is that you are here and may you find courage in that very same heart to do something in this day large or small to bring that unique gift that is you into manifestation in the world For all the incredible spirit help we have that helps us to do that, I give profound gratitude. May what needs to be said be said, and what needs to be heard be heard, and may these proceedings go forward in a way that is good for all living things. So I want to thank all of the listeners that donate financially to this show. This show is listener supported for those of you that are new to the show, which means all of the archives, all 450 plus hours that live at whyshamanismnow.com were financed by listeners like you who were willing and able to donate uh, monthly or once in a while uh, to whyshamanismnow.com. You can do so from that website, click the support button and donate any amount, large or small. We are grateful for all of it. You can donate in any currency. Every bit goes to keeping the show live when we can and available in the archives to anyone in the world who can get on the internet. And so I realized, I was reminded that it's been a long time since I have shared, for those of you that are uncomfortable um, paying online for various reasons, um, that that we do have a physical address. You can send regular old-fashioned checks or money orders to Last Mask Center, 2343 Southeast 44th Avenue, Portland, Oregon. 97215 or you can email me at christina at lastmaskcenter.org and I would be happy to send you that address. So thank you everyone. We are live today. If you have any questions about today's topic, you are welcome to call in at 512-772-1938 or you can Skype in from the Kodash Creator Network.com site or you can email me at christina 
at lastmaskcenter.org. Our topic today is ancestral healing triage, where to begin without traditions. And this is part one of a two-part series. So, we all have ancestors. They are with us in our blood. There is nothing that we can do about that. We can't get here as a human without them. We do not all have traditions that guide us in dealing with our ancestors. Now, some ancestors are true ancestral helping spirits. These ancestors bring us medicine, protection, and a sense of belonging if we know how to let them. Some ancestors are deeply unwell, carrying open wounds, unresolved issues from their own lives, personal and cultural, and the history of all that has been left unreconciled, uh, generation after generation, people to people on this planet. Nonetheless, these ancestors are moving in our lives, and depending on how we choose to relate to them, they can bring us harm or bring us blessings. So what does it really mean to heal your ancestral lines? Why should we bother, right? And where do we begin? So there are a number of shows already in the archives at whyshamanismnow.com about ancestral healing. I've described my take on that many times. We also have a beautiful two-part series um, with Daniel Four talking about ancestral medicine, uh, the process that he describes in his book of the same name, Ancestral Medicine. Um, This is also great work that's being offered out there in the world. So we have radio shows. We have Daniel's work. There are others offering different aspects of this work. Um, Kelly Harrell offers death walking as a training And in the fourth year of the Cycle of Transformation teachings, we also look deeply uh, at that point, since we have quite the skill set, we look deeply at moving into our own ancestral lines and uh, doing what we can to heal those ancestors whose own unresolved issues are in the way of us living our own soul's purpose. And I say do what we can because one of the things that is unique to working with the ancestors, working with your own ancestors, is very often you are not the one to do it. As much as you would like to, even if you have the skills to do it, you're not the one to do it because you are still moving that pattern within you, even in unconscious ways. But you are doing it um, to the degree that you would not be able to see your way clear of the reconciliation that needs to happen, basically because you're stuck in it too. Um, And because the ancestral issues have been with us since our conception, we don't always see them as issues. We have simply incorporated them into our sense of the fabric of reality. So there is a lot going on out in the world right now of different people, um, people in in the therapy world, the psychotherapy world, people in genetic studies, um, both really the science of that and the um, looking at how disease is handed down, uh, both in ways that appear to be genetic or perhaps other ways. Um, It's a bit of a chicken and an egg situation, perhaps. Do the patterns themselves affect the DNA? Does the DNA affect the pattern? It's um, the age-old question with humans and all the potential that is there held in in the information in our DNA. Um, Anyway, my point is, in many different facets of human endeavor, we are seeing the effects of the unresolved energy of the ancestors. Um, and in the healing arts, many people uh, sense it. They get an accurate sense that this is ancestral, but not everybody actually knows exactly what to do with it. Um, 
basically anybody working in any sort of energetic reality of our lives can't help but trip over this huge, growing, stagnant, suffocating presence of energy um, that has been created by many, 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 many generations of humans, and in particular, human beings doing their worst, and what happens in the lives of others when they're affected by human beings doing their worst. Um, So with that said, the other thing about ancestral healing is um, it tends to be a bit of a bummer. It's really never about happy things. Um, On the other hand, the hard work does ultimately pay off when we begin to gain not only the assistance of our true ancestral helping spirits, but we start to transform uh, some of the unresolved energies into the blessings and the medicine that they were always meant to be. Um, This seems like a good moment to point out that ancestral work is not past life work. They can at times cross, but they, it is not a given that they are the same. When you are looking at your past life work, you are looking at your own incarnations. And contrary to the beliefs of some peoples, you do not always incarnate in exactly the same genetic line that It is clear from the work many, many, many people are doing that we incarnate in different lines, different places, not not just different times, but um, with many different um, ancestral lines, basically. And so when we're talking about ancestral healing, one, we're not talking about past lives, but two – The healing piece we're talking about is with our blood. So it's talking about the bloodline ancestors of this lifetime. Now, because of the whole past life situation, we do have ancestors, technically, ancestral helping spirits, more to the point, in every lifetime. Because, again, you can't get here as a human in any time without humans, right, without ancestors. And so what this means is that each of us as an individual, no matter who we are and what people we're from, we all have far more ancestral helping spirits than we do unwell ancestors. And in that array of ancestral helping spirits, most of us cover all possible manifestations of humanity. They co- we come from all over, and we have man- our ancestors have manifest in every possible expression of human being. And so we truly have a wealth of diversity in our ancestral line, and frankly, right now, the living could really use some guidance from that diversity. But even more than that, not only do we have that diversity and we have um, more uh, helpful ancestors than we do problematic ancestors, these ancestors are also the same human family. And so The truth is when we start to dig deeply into our ancestral healing and our family issues, we end up in humanity's ancestors and humanity's issues very quickly. And the need to trace bloodline in a very patriarchal, who actually fathered what children kind of way begins to be pretty absurd. And so I just want to point out that though the effect of the unresolved ancestors at this time on the planet, 2019, is pretty challenging, we do have enormous amounts of help. And so this really is our first issue in our efforts at ancestral healing. The first issue is to deal 
with the fact that we, most of us feel orphaned. Most of us feel pretty disconnected from that vast, diverse range of true ancestral helping spirits. Most of us feel orphaned uh, from traditions and from our people, from a sense of where our people are from in any kind of um, real energetic way, as in we are still connected to the peoples of the land, uh, sorry, the spirits of the land, right? There are also many, many peoples that are, in a sense, orphaned from their ancestors due to the profoundly damaging effects of colonization, the damaging effects of slavery and basically robbing people from their lives into this enforced life, that the things that people encounter that thwart their capacity to move into their destiny are the kinds of things that create unresolved lives. Um, and so, so being orphaned um, by the unfolding of the choices that your ancestral made, ancestors made or being orphaned by force, one way or another – a lot of contemporary people feel kind of at sea with the question of, you know, how do I connect with my ancestors? On one hand, I feel pretty orphaned and disconnected with my ancient ancestors anyway. But number two, I'm not so happy with the people that I know. I'm not so happy with the last few generations of my family. I don't necessarily want to connect with them. Or a third is sometimes people know a lot about their ancestors and they don't want to know them because they weren't such good people. Um, so these are all possibilities and they create a, a very strong uh, energetic relationship of disconnection and alienation and isolation from our ancestors. And so here's really the first part of the challenge of ancestral healing is that to do your own ancestral healing, you must choose to create right relationship with your well ancestors. And the reason you must do this is that we need their energy to heal the outstanding issues with the unwell ancestors that by ourselves no matter how many other types of helping spirits we bring to bear on the issue, no matter how many deities, no matter how many angels, it doesn't really matter how much we bring to bear on the issue until we actually get right with our true ancestral helping spirits, those who are already ready, willing, and able to help us, we will be hard-pressed to make any headway at all. I don't claim to know why this is true. It just is so far. I'm still looking for why. But apparently, from doing the work, what it appears to be is that it, it's, it's somehow about having the right muscles. And what I mean by that is there is something about the good, true, and beautiful ancestral helping spirits that give us the right kind of leverage to help transform things with those that are unreconciled and unwell. So, cultivating right relationship with your well ancestors begins with your orientation towards that. You know, you need to choose to focus energy into those relationships and um, be willing to engage your ancestors to develop a relationship over time and work with them. You need to communicate with them, ask for their help, receive their help, do things with their help, get back to them, let them know their help wasn't enough or it was enough, or, and just begin to enter back into relationship with them until you are able to have a sense that they are with you in your life. 
And so there are numerous ways to do that. Um, what I would like to share today and in part two is how you might go about doing that. Um, for now, I want to just point out that the beginning of dealing with our unwell ancestors is getting right with our good, true, and beautiful ancestral helping spirits, those who um, have been ancestral helping spirits far longer than they uh, were not and have been assisting generations of people. And so the, this is the help that we need to cultivate initially. This then, you know, once we have done that, we gain the muscle, so to speak, to be able to address the particular heaviness of the unresolved ancestors, those who lived completely unreconciled lives and leave an energy that is unwell. Now, to be really simple, technically, the unwell ancestors are ghosts. The well ancestors, the good, true, and beautiful ancestors are helping spirits. And there is a distinction between ghosts who have needs. They are unreconciled. They are unresolved. They are trying to complete something about their life, often many things about their life. The ancestral helping spirits are reconciled. Their lives are reconciled. They either lived well and died well, or at death, their death was tended in such a way so the living assisted them in reconciling their life. But one way or the other, they have found that place of balance and learning from their last incarnation. Okay, so this is the reason healing the unwell ancestors begins with cultivating a relationship with your well ancestors. As you cultivate a relationship with your well ancestors, you begin to gain, uh, to reinforce within you the ability to push aside the influence of the unwell ancestors. And this is another element of working in these energies that is important in a sense, you can think of it as the eyes, uh, using the eyes of the well ancestors can help you to see uh, what aspects of reality are A, real, they just are what they are, or B, your energy, or C, the undue influence of the unwell ancestors, either on life or on you. And so... As I said earlier, without that assistance, we often aren't able to see the influence of the unwell ancestors for what it is because we have for our entire lives incorporated it into the fabric of reality and um, we don't see it anymore. It's our normal, so it's not clear to us anymore. Okay, so. The next step that I would say at the very basic, particularly for those of you that are entertaining this idea for the first time and may not necessarily have a big personal work skill set, understanding the need to first cultivate a relationship with the well ancestors so you can begin to bring uh, relief and reconciliation to the unwell ancestors does one third really important thing. The third most important thing about working with well and unwell ancestors is that you let it teach you how to live well. Understanding what it is that creates the stuckness of the ghosts that are the unwell ancestors helps you understand very clearly the things you should not do in life. Um, it helps you understand clearly the ways that you need to live and the ways you need to avoid living. And so some, this is not an exhaustive list, but it, it, this is an example of what we see as we get into the really stuck ancestral patterns that are at the root of things like alcoholism, other forms of addiction, um, 
sex trafficking, uh, aspects of sex that are not really about sex, but are about power, are about force, are about slavery, um, slavery itself. Uh, okay, so these kinds of issues, uh, what, what is at the root of these patterns that get laid in motion by the unresolved energy of the ancestors is um, that the people themselves have not, remember, they're just people like you and me. For the most part, most of your unwell ancestors are not evil, did not consort with sorcerers, did not do heinous things. Most of them are just like you and me, who had a particularly bad hand dealt with their life. Some of them even had a perfectly decent life. They just had a really bad end. Um, A couple of the really common things I find at the origin of the unresolved ancestral patterns of the living present today, at the origin of it, it's not the pattern we experience in our lives, but the pattern at the origin is the generation at which the family stopped honoring the spirits of the land, but continued to farm the land. So they began to take without being in right relationship with the land any longer. So that is a place at which the family stepped out of right relationship with life. And so this often sets in motion a pattern that is much more uh, familiar to us in com- contemporary time, uh, but it at its root is precisely that choice to step away from the understanding that we need to give to receive. And you certainly see that um, belief that people can just continue to take as a driving force, for example, in the United States. And it's the way in which as a population, um, not each individual, but as a population, it consumes far more resources um, by orders of magnitude than other people and um, coalesces its money in a very small percentage of people Um, has business dealings that focus on constant growing profit, not a sense of things cycling. So these are are manifestations of an old ancestral pattern um, about no longer being in right relationship with the place from which all abundance comes. And these patterns themselves, the current ones, you know, are driving – are a driving force between the choices that add up to the things humanity is doing that are leading towards um, suffocating our oceans in plastic and um, other issues around climate change that could easily get us all killed, right? And so the point of all of this is that we are more involved in the root of the problem and potentially then more involved in the answer to these problems than we really know. Okay, so back to my point, which is, so what have we learned from the unreconciled dead about how we should live our lives? Okay, one is you need to learn to live in a way that you reconcile all of your relationships with other living things and particularly people because those tend to be the ones that get messy. Now, reconciliation means everybody's been heard, everybody's spoken, everyone has been seen. It's reconciled. Everybody has acknowledged and accepted the other in the dynamic for who they are, for what they believe. You may not get to peace You may not, certainly may not get to agreement, and um, it's not necessarily even about forgiveness. It's about being seen, being heard, and often about an apology for having done harm, especially if you didn't mean to. Um, That doesn't necessarily 
mean that it is about agreement or forgiveness. It's just reconciliation, coming to a place of evenness, right? Ideally, we can get beyond that. That would be lovely, but we need to at least live in a way that reconciles our lives, okay? And that and that is um, a much higher value when it comes to living in a way that we can die well than forgiveness, because pushing forgiveness as an always needed outcome um, is puts us in often in impossible positions. Reconciliation is not impossible. It's always possible, even if it's one-sided on your part. And the other thing is learning to reconcile your internal relationships. So reconciling relationship with your internal selves. Um, another quality would be living in right relationship with your own purpose or destiny depending on how you think about it. In other words, you don't want to leave an unlived life. Okay. Another um, quality would be never standing um, in the way of another's destiny. Right? So not making your great fortune on the backs of a group of people who you know, do cheap labor or not making your fortune um, on the backs of some precious um, natural substance being mined or harvested or extracted in some way from the earth in a way that is profoundly toxic, right? So never standing in the way of another's destiny. Um Another would be upholding the energetics of right relationship with everything around you, that everything is allowed its place, that everything is um, circular and uh, restorative, like the seasons circular, Um, living in right relationship with things around you and not taking more than is yours uh, or more than you are giving. Okay. Okay. Another is cultivating emotional maturity. Emotionally immature responses and relationships lead to unreconciled relationships at the end of life. Uh, Cultivate spiritual adulthood. So living um, without taking responsibility for your own spiritual cultivation and your own relationship with spirit in your life is another Uh, relationship left unreconciled if you don't step into that responsibility in life. It doesn't really matter how you do it. It just matters that you do do it. Often leaving soul loss, um, untransformed shadow selves, just basically avoiding doing your own personal healing in this life can definitely uh, become an issue that leaves you unreconciled and unable to leave at the end of your life. And then ultimately what we find is that more and more people that allowed their unresolved ancestral energies to influence their decisions in such a way that they propagated the pattern is almost a guarantee that they will be stuck here and become part of that force of unresolved ancestral energies that basically influence the descendants to continue in the same pattern and to be stuck in the pattern. So these are some of the things that we've learned about how to live well by working with the unresolved energy of the ancestors to set that right. So the next thing that's um, on our list of, okay, so how do we do this? We've talked about the key elements here, which is well ancestors, unwell ancestors, and recognizing that what we are learning and doing this should be informing how we are choosing to live, right? I mean, in general, I mean, specifically, it informs us very directly. I was speaking to the general ways we need, the the stance we need to take in life, the skills we need to develop, the things we need to value and how we relate to each other can be easily defined by looking at what causes people to get stuck. That's generally true for all of us. What is specifically true as you do ancestral healing and help to unravel the patterns that are sticking the unresolved 
ancestors, is you then need to look for that pattern in your own behavior. Now, I don't farm in my life. So if I have an ancestor who was that generation that stopped leaving offerings and being in right relationship with the spirits of the land but kept farming, obviously that exact expression of that pattern is not something that I'm doing. Um, But what we look for in the essence of the energetic pattern is not the form the ancestors necessarily did because they were in a vastly different time. But to look at the actual movement of energy in the pattern and how it is that I am living that pattern now in my own very contemporary way. So how am I um, cutting off right relationship with the energetic environment around me, for example? And then uh, so very specifically, the working with the unresolved energy of the ancestors helps us to see specific patterns within ourselves that we need to change. So we need to change our own contemporary version of those patterns. Okay, so those are the basics of beginning to wrap our heads around this. And um, I just remembered something I forgot earlier, which is this also explains for those of you that have done traditional practices to elevate your ancestors – why it's gotten complicated after that because usually in those traditions there's no need to distinguish between well ancestors and unwell ancestors traditionally there would not have been so traditional practices for the elevation of ancestors into ancestral helping spirits um, essentially partially elevates unresolved ancestors into this role and so you start calling on dead people who aren't any smarter dead than they were living and working with them as helping spirits without realizing they have their own agenda and that their answers are going to be biased towards their agenda and so it's a very actually a dangerous position to put yourself in um But usually it gets messy enough that people have to then reach out for help again because it can become very problematic if you're essentially elevating unwell ancestors and then treating them as true helping spirits and following their guidance. That's a problem. Okay. Um, The other version of that is people that receive traditional ancestral healing from traditional healers. But again, the format for traditional people is based on a culture that tends their dead and the ancestors are primarily a good thing. And so traditional ancestral healing often deals with the actual ghost that is here ghosting about causing the problem and helping to cross them over and helping to move you out of your version of those patterns or out of the dynamic of the relationship with that dead person. Good work. But it's not actually healing the ancestral line because it's not going back to the origin of the problem. And so often a person feels enormously better initially, but four to six months later, all the old patterns emerge again because the root of the problem in the ancestral realm hasn't been dealt with. And so the pattern pours back into current reality and establishes itself in a new way. Okay, and so... So this is why first making this distinction between well and unwell, understanding how that's part of the landscape right now, and also recognizing you need to be drawing from this how to best live your own life is all the like layer one of beginning to work with your ancestors and cultivating only well ancestors. This is what we would ideally want is to heal all four of our own ancestral lines. Okay, so with that lofty goal out there, how we do this is another aspect of us uh, healing where we are unwell within ourselves, which is many of us get pretty disconnected from art and making things with our own hands because we are not, in a sense, we were told we weren't good enough to be artists. We didn't sing well enough to make money from singing. We didn't dance well enough to be a professional dancer. And so 
at least in the United States, there's a tendency to shut people down around art if they don't have a, a talent for it. Um, now, there's a certain beauty in moving kids into vocational training in areas they show an aptitude for. What I'm talking about is not also cutting off their experience of doing art because your ability to make things, to create things, and to imbue what you're creating with a kind of energetic spirit uh, is a really important aspect of working with the ancestors well. Um, and so it's important for you, if you choose to do this, to dust off your art skills, your your willingness to express yourself through movement, your willingness to express yourself through sound, through singing, through toning, and your willingness to express yourself um, in visual art like painting, drawing, um, you know, naked body painting, I don't know, whatever. The point is art and your willingness to craft things with your own hands, even if you're not good at it. Okay, so why? Why is this important with ancestral healing? There is a level of complexity with ancestral spirits that we don't, we humans, don't experience with other spirits because they are not connected to us in our blood. And so there is a dual dynamic with the dead. Whereas all helping spirits, even the particularly um, malignant ones, have to respect your free will and your choice, your boundaries. They can easily trick many people into violating it themselves, but they can't. But with the unresolved ancestors, because they are already part of your blood and their patterns kind of came in on your blood, basically, um, it's like they get in under the gate in a certain way. They still cannot choose for you. Your free will is still your own. They can't take it from you, but they do have an incredible ability to influence your perception, your perception of reality, your perception of what your possibilities are, your perception of what your choices could be, and most important, your perception of yourself and what choices you can actually make and follow through on. Okay, so... To begin to deal with this situation, we want to anchor our ancestral helping spirits in our lives in a very strong way as a way to begin to balance that connection through the blood. And so traditionally, in many, many cultures, people tend an ancestral shrine so a shrine is a physical space. It's like an altar, but it's dedicated to one energy, to the ancestors. And so one of the first things that we need to create if we're going to work with our ancestors is a shrine. And then within the shrine, there are power objects. And power objects can be imbued with many different energies that we want to work with with the dead. Um, one of the most important things about an ancestral shrine is to not put any living on it. That's problematic because they're not dead yet. And so the ancestral shrine is basically a home, quote unquote, little space in your physical life that you invite the ancestors in to inhabit. Okay, so there's a shrine. I've talked about this actually at length on other shows. There are power objects, and in particular, the power object specific family ancestral help, helping spirits have invited have been invited to inhabit and empower. And then there are your actions daily in tending the shrine, singing songs to the ancestor, leaving offerings of food, of libations, um, I bring flowers um, or plants that are growing as, as um, the environment around me moves through the seasons. Um, 
prayers, another very powerful thing to bring to the ancestral shrine. You know, prayers, although prayers are not always an offering, often prayers are the, the means by which you set your intention with the ancestors. And it is the repetition of the prayer that is basically the same daily that um, sets up this dynamic resonance with your ancestors and really focuses your intention on what it is that you want them to do for you in this day. So the prayer that I use has a certain structure, and then the very end of it is where the unique part of the day gets added, where I ask for the specific help for the things that are specifically ahead of me in that day. And if you'd like to um, see that prayer, you can go to lastmaskcenter.org and click on the ancestral prayer button right there on the home page and um, it will take you to a video of the answer me sharing the ancestral prayer and talking about the ancestral prayer so you can go there to see that um, and then the final thing that involves creativity is again working with energies, working energies into power objects that you've created and working the power objects then into elemental rituals. Because the elemental rituals become a way across generations that we can work with the um, emotional energy and the psycho-spiritual energy that is bound up in the unresolved energy of the ancestors and move those energies in a way that begins to clear and release and transform the reasons the unwell are being held uh, here with the living where they no longer belong once they're dead. And then the final point that I wanted to make today in part one is that to do this work for the ancestors is one of the most profound and vast gifts that you can give to your children or grandchildren, to your nieces or nephews. That the, the well ancestors, for example, can be brought in to the very beginning to the life of a child to bring in protection for that child. In many cultures, there's some piece of art like embroidery or something used to work the energy of the ancestral helping spirits into the very garments or blankets that the child is wrapped in or the garments that they wear. So the protection is brought directly into their lives. Um, for children, being connected to their ancestors allows them a kind of belonging that is not rooted here in the physical world. Because part of life here in the physical world is loss. And loss can, can add up and we end up feeling disconnected and alienated and uh, isolated. And yet if we have a relationship, an ongoing good, healthy relationship with our good, true and beautiful ancestral helping spirits, we belong. And there is always someone there uh, protecting us and bringing us blessings and, and very much connected to us. So this is another valuable aspect of having a robust working relationship with your true ancestral helping spirits for your children. Children love tending an ancestral shrine as, as a means to communicate with their ancestors so that that can be a place um, that they can join you in the practice. Um, it also can help you engage in their own healing and ultimately lift this enormous burden off their shoulders. There is absolutely no mystery to me why teenagers are angry these days in the Western world. They are inheriting a horrible burden of unresolved energies that their elders are doing nothing about. They are simply passing the buck. And um, uh, frankly, I'm angry for them. Um, and so, so this influences them by creating energies they cannot surmount um, that result in them simply checking out in life, like falling into video games addictions or other addictions, not wanting to learn, not wanting to pursue a purpose, not wanting to move towards their destiny. These energies in the young, which are so contrary to young, uh, the energy of youth, are almost always caused by this great burden of unresolved ancestral energy. So it is a really important gift that you can give to your children of any age. 
So this is about as far as I wanted to go with part one this week around um, ancestral healing triage. Where do we begin? How do we do it? One of the most important things I want to talk about in part two is that you do need to learn skills to do this well. And you do often need to ask for help. And sometimes you need to ask for help from people that have a skill set that's way better than yours. And that's not uncommon for working with ancestral energies. So with that said, I want to give profound and special gratitude today to my own good, true, and beautiful ancestors, those that support me in my work and help my work to reach out much greater than my own natural reach. And I'm grateful for the energy of the earth below and the sky above and very, very grateful for the heart that unites us all. Uh, us here, the living, the living to the ancestors, and the living to the descendants. So with that said, I wanted to share that I'm going to introduce um, a new course. It will be offered by Shift Network. I haven't done a Shift Network course before. And this course is called Healing with Your Well and Unwell Ancestors. Transform Unresolved Patterns into Blessings, Hope, and Sacred Medicine. Okay, so this is a brand new course. I've never offered this material before. The registration will be open September 21st, 2019. So for those of you that are listening current with this show being live, it's in two weeks. If you want to get in line for that registration, you can go to lastmasscenter.org and click on the ancestral prayer, prayer, like I was already saying. That will bring you on to a mailing list and will let you know um, as soon as the registration goes live. It is not live at the moment. So you'll, you'll need to wait. So the course runs October 9th. It runs for seven weeks. Everything is recorded. So if the time the class is happening doesn't work for you, that's fine. You can watch it through the recording. And it will run live on Wednesdays at 12 noon. And like I said, this is a great seven-week course of new information. Really perfect for those of you that do not have the prerequisites for the Ancestral Healing online course I will be offering much later in 2020 because the prerequisites for that course are energy body mastery, energy body clearing, and shamanic journeying because that course is going to be very focused on the skills for deep issue repair in the ancestral line. This one is more about the triage we're talking about here today. Um, And again, this one is called Healing with Your Well and Unwell Ancestors, Transform Unresolved Patterns into Blessings, Hope, and Sacred Medicine. And the registration for that will open September 21st, 2019. And you can get on the list by going to lastmasscenter.org and clicking on the Ancestral Prayer button and sign up there. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week.